Let me re-anchor. Let me watch the clock too. That's fine. I better not watch the clock. <laughs> no, we got we got you. No, for real. I want my heart to be here with you guys, and I don't want this just to be a, a logical, you know, expression. I want to give you guys my heart today. So, so back to my point. Um, I wanted to share something really personal. So, so I grew up um, in a family where my dad and my mom were, you know, they spent most of their time trying to impress their rich friends. And so I looked up to my grandparents, because my parents were up there. And <clears throat> I saw something at such a young age through near-death experiences and flatlining a bunch of times and some crazy God-given experiences. I, was, I won't say accident anymore, right? It was given to me. Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> and I saw something in my grandfather. He was a World War II vet. And he was just the happiest man on the planet, but he was like a warrior. He, he'd come back from war, last remaining survivor, two companies men, D-Day, Normandy Beach, like saving Private Ryan stuff. They went <laughs> back to the Korean War. And I just had so much respect and honor in this man. And when I talk about values, that's where I harvested a lot of my values. Like he would speak the truth without reserve. Like there was no, like he wasn't concerned about feelings. He'd just be like, here's the truth. He, he cared about people. He, he, you hear give the shirt off his back? He was one of those people literally pull all the money out of his wallet and give someone money. And he taught me certain values with his demonstration without ever telling me to do anything or who to be. And when I got older, my family wasn't there when my grandparents went through sickness. My grandmother went through cancer. They thought she was gonna die. She was told she was, told she was gonna die. And uh, they asked my grandparents, her kids, my two, uh, my, my dad, I don't call him my dad, but my biological father, my uncle, and my aunt asked my, I don't tell the story very often, I'm just being totally real with you guys. They asked my grandma for their inheritance. They were like, hey, can we have our inheritance before you die so that you can see us happy in spending <laughs> it before we die, before you die? And um, like, I remember how hurt my grandfather was by that, right? And uh, just so you know, my grandmother's still alive. She's 92 years old, living in a nursing home here in Sedona, Arizona. I cared for her the last 10 years. Cared for my grandfather until he's 94. And we lost him from Earth a few years back. But my point in sharing this, there was a moment where I thought about those words, inheritance. And I was like, I don't want to dime. I already inherited all the values required for me to create with nothing. The kingdom of heaven is inside of me. I can envision something when I have nothing behind the bars, behind the walls of, of facing the heart monitor, whatever it may be. I can envision a future void of pain. And those are values I knew in my heart. I was here to inherit to my children, my ancestors. And I think of that girl in the wheelchair. She may have condemned her fucking ancestors, her children. So I'll give up on her marriage, give up on her business. And now that's their demonstration and model. I see it everywhere I go. And I made a decision back then, actually when my grandfather died, that I would, I would become a model of those values in my life for my children, for my family, for my people, those values. And that I would tolerate nothing less than those values from the people in my life because no one's doing it for themselves. And so I wanted to share that because I believe the greatest inheritance we have is our demonstrated actions. Your kids don't do what you fucking tell them. <laughs> you crazy? They do what you do. And then you're mad at them for doing the shit you do. <laughs> it's real. And so I, I am really passionate about what I'm going to share with you. I don't share it that often outside of our private soldiers trainings, which is a referral only thing. I have people to go find people. I haven't, I haven't put a sales page out in years. It's like a little private, like fight club type thing. So anyway, <laughs> <my favorite. laughs> right? <laughs> it really is. So uh, here's the here's the truth, guys. What I want to share with you is this. Like, like I said, there's people watching the news all the time, scared, fighting over which political side is the most pertinent and important. Right? What's the opposite of left? Right. Right. Okay, what's opposite of right? Left. Yeah, most people, when I ask them in a different order and say what's opposite of right, they usually wrong. say wrong. <laughs> so I wanted to make sure we put it that way. Because, look, 
I believe that even if Russia or China really took over, if you're resourceful enough, you'll learn to speak Chinese and Russian. Resourceful. And, and you'll, you'll demonstrate what I'm about to share with you in your life. It doesn't matter where you go, whether you can speak their language or not. Money will follow you like weight behind a ship. Love will follow you like weight behind a ship. You will feel a sense of purpose and service in everything that you do. And when people come up to you and tell you, you're amazing, you're awesome, this changed my life, you'll, you'll go, and? <laughs> because you'll no longer be surprised when you do it long enough. That's the truth. So, you guys ready? So, back to my point, what is soul? It's the voltage, it's the energy we can't see that leaves the body. It can be measured, it can be felt. Like, we live in a time now where it's simply science. And I want to share with you guys three things. The modern currency, how to automate your motivation, and how to tap into, how to tap into purpose profit. <clears throat> so one of the first things I'm going to talk about here, I'm going to actually reference some of my stuff so I do stay a little on track. Are you guys cool if I be a little bit left brain, a little bit right brain? Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm always trying to fit like 25 pounds of potatoes into a two pound sack. <laughs> That's the truth. You right? Yeah. Uh, so, first thing I'm going to teach you guys, I call the modern currency. Right? So the modern currency, when we're talking about soul science, it's really important to understand this. It doesn't matter what language you speak. When most people come to the door to sell you something, whether it's online at their ad, or literally at your front door, who here's ever had it? It's getting less and less. Mm -hmm. But who here has been sold at the front door? Like purchased? Because they sold, sold to. Sold magazines. to. Sold to. Uh, sold to. Yeah. Try to, try to win a vacation. No. Do you get a magazine subscription from me? <laughs> right. So here's the deal. Most of those people, what's their motive when they come to the door? What do they want from you? Money. 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 And you smell that from a million miles away. We live in the age of intuition. We no longer live in the age of data. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you're woo-woo or not. If you grew up in my generation, like, you've watched the news. You don't trust the news. Most people don't trust police, that's pretty obvious. Most people don't trust doctors. Most people don't trust politicians. Nope. What authority figures did we grow up trusting? Paris Hilton? <laughs> 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 right? Jersey Shore? No. no, legit. The Kardashians are now our influencer celebrities. Those are the values our children are following. Let's march to those orders. No, it's not. So... <laughs> So back to my point, we live in the age of intuition. When the, when the towers got struck, everyone was like, is this real? Seems like a movie, seems like a stage. People have become skeptical. Year 2000, conspiracy theory sites blew up everywhere because the conspiracies were being exposed. We live in the age of intuition. Most human beings don't accept what knowledge is coming to them firsthand. Now when they make a purchase, they go to multiple non-related sources of evidence to verify the truth. We live in the age of intuition. Someone comes up to you saying one thing, and you're like, I hear what you're saying, but the nose that knows smells some bullshit. Not, not this one, this one. The nose that knows, right? The one that smells bullshit from a million miles away. So, hello? My radar says, oh, this guy's tuned into WIFM. Does anyone know what WIFM is? Let's see for me. Yeah. <laughs> and when someone's tuned into WIFM, like you can feel it, right? Did I walk in WIFM dripping off me? No. When this guy's up here talking, does he want anything from you or is he giving you everything he has? Unleash him. That's my point. And for what purpose? To serve. To eliminate pain from your life. Most people show up, hi sir, blah, 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 checkbook please, credit card please, want to buy some? I was just in Puerto Rico. Every third person on the street's like, hey man, come here, you want some skin cream? Let me sell you a bottle of skin cream. You want these fake Louis Vuitton purses? Two for a hundred. Like, they don't give a shit. They just want to get paid. So my point is, the same is true in most scenarios. And back to values, that's where I've sharpened my indicator because I've, I've made some valuable lessons, cost me millions of dollars. Sometimes two or three hundred thousand 
sign, sign the check, 300 grand, read the contract afterwards and go, man, the values that were expressed and the money I lost, there's a big gap there. <laughs> right? And so you learn to develop intuition, but I also learn to make sure that I'm showing up, not just with my mind and my emotions tied to the purpose of why I'm here, but my body. I want to elevate my frequency because the modern currency is a real thing. And when someone's demonstrating a, a motive to you that you can smell with your w diet, WIFM, isn't, they don't really care about you. You've heard the cheesy phrase, people don't care what you know until they know that you care, mm -hmm. right? Well, if you're showing up biting your nails, hungry, come on. So don't be too hungry. <laughs> Make sure you eat before you go sell some. <laughs> right? Like, no, but really, like you can feel when someone is is there to serve your pain and eliminate your suffering versus serve their own motives. And that is the highest value. When you want to be highly paid, the highest paid people on the planet are who? The people that solve the biggest problems. If you go to a pediatrician for your kids to have their runny nose looked at, you're looking at a $75 bill probably. You call the ER because your child's not breathing, it might be five to 10 grand. Why? The pain is more urgent. So like, think about that. Ambulances get paid. You want to get paid a lot? Be an ambulance. I mean it. Like, salt pain fast, that's hard pain to solve. They require specialized expertise. You don't want Cousin Eddie picking you up, taking you to the hospital when you're gasping for air, do you? You guys know what Cousin Eddie is? No. We can infer the reference. <laughs> so, what this is... Oh man, so many people, I'm going to just say this because I've stood in little boardrooms like this and some of my best clients, some of my best breakthroughs with strangers, people who've never known me before, it's after I said this one thing right now before I share anything else. Most of the reason most people don't have what they want in their life, you ready? You want to know what, what, why, what it is? Because you don't trust and respect yourself. When you know the motive you're showing up for is because the bills aren't going to be paid if you don't make the sale, and that's in your core conscious of emotions and mind, you don't trust yourself knocking on that door, knock, 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 knock. When you're showing up in scarcity and you got red with a minus sign in the bank account, do you trust yourself? Nah. When you wake up late and you need coffee to show up somewhere, because you're tired from the night before? Do you really trust yourself when you're depending on coffee for your energy? Come on. That's what this is. Trust plus respect when demonstrated consistently across time equals loyalty. I've witnessed every kind of brand you can imagine operate with this. One of my friends, Dan Fleischman, do you guys know who he is? Mm -hmm. This motherfucker has switched his niche so many times and taking his whole fan base. He doesn't go find a new audience. He goes, hey guys, I'm gonna get you interested in my vision. This guy was like a business dude. Now he's got people excited about Pokemon. <laughs> no, if you guys know who this guy is, multi, multi-millionaire, youngest person ever sell a nationally traded company, right? Tesla, Elon Musk. Yeah, at the time though, when, when, when uh, Dan Fleischman his energy drink. He was the youngest dude to ever launch a publicly traded company and then sell it. And so my point is, he's known for all of these amazing business things he's done, and he's had this hundred million mastermind. I don't know if you guys are familiar with this mastermind, hundred k a ticket. They got five thousand applications, only about a hundred people in. Right? You have to have done a hundred million in sales or hundred million customers. It's pretty powerful. And this guy just decides, yeah, I like cards from when I was a kid. I like coffee. I'm gonna open a cards and coffee shop. Sure. Because he has so much trust and respect with his audience instantly. That just transfers to whatever business he goes into. Because people trust that guy. Network marketers. I spent a lot of time with network marketers. They used to hire me to keynote all the time. And they all have amazing products. I built a few uh, companies even in network marketing. And I had to do it silently. Because you can't like cross promote. So I had to do it like privately. 
man, those things get shut down. I was the keynote and international speaker for a company called Beamer. You guys know about Beamer? Yeah. Bioelectric. Yeah. I'm a soul scientist, so I study all this stuff. Yeah, so I, I've been speaking for them for a couple of years. FDA shut them down last year in the United States. What do you think happens? All these people, that, that was their money. That was their way of making money. It's gone. Now they're like, wait, but I was selling this. I was selling the dream. I was selling this. And those that built trust and respect and have loyalty with people just go, hey, guys, we're going over here now. We're doing this thing now. Who's coming with me? And they just bring their tribe with them. I've done it a whole bunch of times, all sorts of things I've done. And this is truly the modern currency. It's trust and respect. And the things you do on a day-to-day -day basis and the things you do on the macro in your life determine the trust and respect you have for yourself. When you wake up in the morning, you immediately open your eyes and you got these thoughts going, I'm tired, I just wanna sleep in. One more minute, I just lost some trust and respect for myself. Over here, this feeling, man, I should just go show up and not be a bull. I don't wanna put these emotions on these people. I should just tell them I'm sick and not show up at their event because I don't wanna do an event a little tiny Airbnb and not be able to bring my fire and feel annoyed and people think that that's who I am. Nah, I just, I don't wanna go into that emotion. I wouldn't respect myself if I accepted less than my highest value and gave you an option to see beyond your excuses, right? Would you respect me if we were sitting in that Airbnb right now? Maybe, but not as much as you do today. <laughs> <laughs> so that's my point. This is like a, a, a universal idea that you can just stop at any moment and be like, will I trust myself when I make this decision more? Will I respect myself? And then think of the relationships in your life. Sounds silly, but I got loyalty tattooed on my heart. Mm -hmm. Why? Because every decision I make that feels like I'm being disloyal to my purpose, to higher standards that God would want for me if I'm born into a, a world of options and agency and choice, and I was made the image of infinite choice and options and agency? How can I trust and respect myself? So for me, this is the, the start of... Of the game, you have to understand that in the age of intuition, trust and respect you have for yourself. When you're showing up knocking on the door, you want to get some play in your relationship as a man, whatever it may be, you better show up not just with your own needs, not with your own wants. You better really show up with the service of painting the pleasure you know you can provide. So, yeah, thank you. This is like I, I got a guy back there, it's like my slide turner. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, what are they, what are no, I love it. A human, a human side turner. It's like, come on, that's like, I feel special. <laughs> so look, back to this point, you said it best. You've sat in those events, the Tony Robbins shit. Everybody, uh, ah, <laughs> woo, and then like, you just spent so much energy at the, at the fucking event. Everyone's like, you guys wanna go get dinner? No, man, I gotta go get some sleep. <laughs> and you wake up the next day hungover like you drank vodka. <laughs> right? You guys ever been to these events? The next, you get home on Monday from one of those events and you wake up like, oh man, I'm not Tony Robbins. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the jolly green giant who seems like a cartoon character who's filled with energy. Where's he get that motivation? Who here saw I'm Not Your Guru? Fuck, half the movie was that guy just doing self-care. Because he's burnt out all the time. I've worked with the guy. I'm not bad-mouthing him. He's a legend. But he's burnt out all the time. You were like, am I like this all the time? Yeah, when I'm around people, I'm the same way. When I'm around people, I'm a fireball. But you know what I'm doing when I'm not being a lighthouse? What's a lighthouse's job during the day? Sleep. Recharge it. Find power, baby! <laughs> you ain't gonna shine very far or very bright if you're trying to shine all the fucking time. Right? And although we don't sleep in the day, it's not just sleep, it's what can I do to harvest more trust and respect for myself and in that process align with the natural order of science that determines how this electrical meat sack we're living in can hold more voltage so I can show up and give the people that I'm about to go see when I leave here, my babies, my eight-year-old, my 10-year-old, my wife, so I can give them the best of me, not what's left of me, right? Yep. 
I'm not gonna empty my battery, and when I do, oh man, there's some days I wake up, I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna go be the cruise director today, woo! <laughs> and I get up, and I, I, I do my self-care, and I check my texts, <laughs> and I get to go be a fireman all day. <laughs> and if I prepared energy to be the cruise director, and I didn't create energy to be the fireman, everything burns to the ground. And you gotta stay ready to be ready, there's no other be ready. You ready? Do you answer anything but always? You've already lost the game. So I'm gonna teach you guys this concept I call motivation automation. So many people have lost the game. This is how to automate your motivation. This isn't some gimmick. It's something I call the 6S sequence. It's a cheesy, like, they call it a moniker, right? 6S? <laughs> Success. I, I create lots of little things like that so that like children can remember these things. So if this seems childish, it is. <laughs> hey, I'm an author and a publisher. If you guys don't have use the Hemingway app, does anyone know what the Hemingway app is? What is that? Oh boy. What is no, it? I'm playing. So okay. like, no, listen to this. The human mind does not like complexity. You probably know that. Mm -hmm. Who here is saw a beautiful picture on Instagram or Facebook, and then you go to read the, the post and all, all your brain sees is wall of text. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Literally, TLDR. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's, that's my point. Like you gotta break things down into simplified chunks for people. And Hemingway, in, in the writing world, is just Google Hemingway app. It's like Hemingway.app, I believe. You can take any copy of <clears throat> writing that you're publishing, copy paste it in there, and it'll give you like highlights of what to change to make it like Hemingway appropriate, which is sixth to eighth grade reading level. Wow. Right? There used to be a show called Smarter Than a Fifth Grader. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most people failed. <laughs> on that show. Uh, and so it's really important to know that you should simplify things to simple imagery, letters and numbers, and like basic fifth to eighth grade concepts. Because most humans get so arrogant by the time. Do you remember when you were fifth to sixth grade? You had already decided how the world works. Mm -hmm. So we stop, you know, advocating our curiosity. Mm -hmm. and I just thought I'd throw that little, that little tidbit <laughs> in. Yeah. So I'm going to draw this out here. See You're how all like still middle schoolers. No, really. <laughs> We're all a bunch of bruised children's hearts walking around in meat sacks. So, like, really, though, you know, mm -hmm. I could get really fired up on this stuff. So, <clears throat> Let me think of how I want. I'm going to shortcut this, guys. So, basically, this is the motivation, natural inspired motivation sequence, okay? I'm going to just write it on here. Natural inspiration. Inspiration also means more oxygen. To be inspired is to have more oxygen in your body. So, needs. Who here has done a good job studying the human needs. You talked about some of the human needs. I heard significance in some of Tony Robbins' human needs, but who here studied Maslow's hierarchy of needs? So three or four of you. This is really based on Maslow's hierarchy. Who here knows what the biggest difference that changed between 1500 BC to 1580? Biggest change. Basically nothing. <laughs> no, really. Quality of life and technology like did not advance almost like if you go look at like at 1500 this is BC and you go look at like 1500 AD and this is like zero and we're here. Technology was basically a flat line to here. And even quality of life from poverty to royalty was like, you ate beef instead of chicken. <laughs> Your robe was dyed with beets instead of pig's blood. <laughs> like literally, quality of life was based exclusively on survival. That's it. Most of our programming for 3,000 years until just the last couple hundred years, now we're here. <laughs> And so that's that first part of the game that's controlling most of our operating system. Survival. Our survival needs. Like, think about it. 
And so what are our survival needs? What <coughs> are they? There are physical needs. Most of our life from 1500 BC to 1500 AD was really basic and really obvious that the quality of what you need for physical survival determines the quality of your life. It wasn't about money. It's like how well you can farm, how well you can hunt, how well you can get other people to do that for you at the highest level, which was like less than 1%. It was like 0.00001%. So all of us and all of our ancestors have one thing in common. We fucking know they're programmed to survive. And most human beings are still operating right here in this level, mentally and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So what do most people do when they get up in the morning? They start thinking about money. No, all the men in here, it's more dramatic for even men with money in the bank. In fact, I feel like more money have in the bank. More just happens to me. I wake up and I'm like, is it safe? Literally. Yeah. Yeah. I wake up and that part of my survival mind's immediately here. This might sound crude. Then I'm like, man, that's stressful. Where's my wife? You have sex. <laughs> That's literally what my brain thinks about. I don't choose those thoughts. I wake up and it's like, keep the fucking castle whole. Keep the money safe. Make sure the pigs and chickens are in the fridge. And make sure we have procreation so our ancestors can live. Like, those are our instincts of survival. And as men, it's really obvious. Well, you have those things too. Right? Yours is like a little more like, am I safe? Will he protect me? A lot of women have a man. Can I take care of myself? Can I trust and respect myself without a man? Like, we have these thoughts, all of us. So, <clears throat> let's say all your survival needs are met. Let's say you got all your survival, physical needs. What are our next needs? Sensation. Think about it. The second we have our survival needs done in a day, we're like, how many people are sitting in front of a TV? Sight, sound. All right, sight and sound's handled. No, no, no. Taste and touch is handled. I'm feeling things because they got like crude humor and violence and sex and things to trigger all my survival feelings. All my sensations are activated. Salt, sugar. All my left brain survival. My left brain computer is like, did, 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 survive. Oh, my left brain's a little exhausted. Now what do I do? Oh, let's just access these right brain senses as quickly as possible. Sight, sound, touch, taste, smell. Clunk. That's what most people are doing. And that's how they're fulfilling those needs. They just don't know they're doing it in this order all the time. What's the next one? You, you already hinted. What's the next one? So this is mental. What's the next one? Emotional. So this is mental needs. This is emotional. And what emotionally do we need? Challenge. Significance! What our man was talking about when I walked in the door very passionately. With a lot of significance, right? A lot of meaning in his words. We all want to feel some sense of 